Everyone ready? Okay. Here goes nothing. Uh, I'm not kidding. <laughs> this show is called Unwaxed. It's not called Unfiltered. Okay, you guys. Known for his extensive music career, he has three platinum albums, 10 gold albums, and has even acted in over 60 films. Our Uncle Frank! Uh, thank you, my little... Thank you. Frank Stallone, people. My little sweeties, thank you. Oh. Yeah. I think we should just jump right into your music career. That okay. is what you're known for. Yeah. You're a guitarist, a songwriter. I started singing really kind of around the house when I was five years old. My aunt, uh, Nancy, she spoke like it is. She talk it. They, no, this they're all... This whole podcast they're is all, gonna be accents. Yeah, they're all it. off the boat, so they go, I hear it tonight, this Elvis uh, guy gonna be on the TV. This is exactly what I want to be. I mean, the Re floppy Elvis hair. Was the, your oh, so Elvis icon. was your icon. Oh, absolutely. This will probably tell you why I'm not married. My mother was married five times. My father was married four times. Right. Boing. Boing. <laughs> yeah, really good blueprint out there for like, you know, for marriage. Good so, examples. Yeah, yes. really good examples. My mother had taken off. She left. She had married this other guy. When my mother came back, she did a nice Christmas for us, probably the only good one we had. She bought two ukuleles for my brother and I, thinking we were gonna be like the Everly Brothers. Within two hours, he smashed it over my head. Terrible. What is wrong? He's so he was, jealous. He was the original Dennis the Menace. Yeah. He was getting in fights every day. So then he kind of got into superheroes. He jumped off the, the roof of the house, oh, broke his this. collarbone. Yeah. My father was like, they're not, and my father was pretty mean. Sly, can't understand to this day. I said, Sly, you snuck out of the house at 13 and stole his Cadillac and got into an accident. Okay, oh, see, I, you know what? That's why I like talking to you. That's because true. Because Sly never tells the truth about a story. No, and never. we get the honest truth from you. That is true. I would have to say one of my favorite stories was something to do with a black sea urchin. He stuck it in my he face and hair. Basically, I hate I hate skin diving. So we were, they go, hey, we're gonna take skin diving lessons. I go, not really. And my hair was like down to here. And we're under there. All of a sudden he pulls my mask off. And I go into total panic mode. I come up, I go, what are you doing, man? <laughs> <laughs> Such so an then ass. he finds a sea urchin and he sticks it like right kind of in my hair and face. And it just latches. latches. You can't get it out. Latches to his hair. So now I come out of the water, I look like a total moron with the sea urchin like stuck in my hair. And he thinks it's funny. Yeah. But I was really afraid. I don't like being underwater like Oh, that's like me. In my documentary, we talked about my panic attack era. I want to ask how you were able to cope with it in your generation, because today it's a different time. We have way more resources, Well, tools, there was no help. resources, no. So how did you go through well, that? Well, you have weird thoughts. You have gory thoughts. You have fear of thoughts. What saved me was music because wow. I, I, when I'd be on stage, I'd be fine. And I really wanted to ask Oh, that how... makes sense where I got it from. I actually should take some advice from you. No. I had no idea he suffered panic attacks. I mean, that's something that I've gone through since childhood. Honestly, it makes me sad. I wish I had talked to him about it more, but I'm really, really glad that we're having this conversation now. It makes me feel a lot more bonded with him. Is this your house? Huh? No, that one on the right. Oh. No, this one. Right there. I lived here about seven and a half, eight years. That was when I started to act. That's when I started to write a little bit. When I was in that house, I was kind of a scrawny kid. I could spend a lot of time alone, and I would literally put on musical scores, and I would move around that room, play every part. Literally, I'd spend hours and hours just doing these odd routines. So I realized I was not fit for the normal world. I was always gonna be somewhere in the world where you had to create your own little universe. Well, well, well. This is so Hi. Cool. Can we go inside? Sure. Oh, my God. This is the first door I literally was thrown through. I'll tell you that story. My childhood was kind of complicated. Everyone was trying to make their own way, so it wasn't um, your all-American family role model situation where everyone sort of looked out for one another. Everyone was kind of like on their own. This is it. Is that your bedroom? Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. My brother lived next door. He was in this other room? Why, routinely tortured. It looks really great. Much more cheerful. This is great. Do you, do you remember it being this nice? No, mine was not this nice. Reading my dad's expressions, I think it's a mix of so many different emotions. I have to admit, my dad has fought a lot growing <laughs> up. He was always rocky. Down here is where you came to settle neighborhood disputes. You'd move the furniture back and you... 
coming into his childhood home has made me realize I've been completely selfish and I should be here with my family. Rocky started right here. We may donate this to my grandson's school. You should donate that to eBay, pal.